Hey guys, Josh Finn here from J&H Aerospace with my Poly C. You'll notice this one's different from the uh, the one that was in the previous video. That one went bye bye. Uh, but regardless, a lot of you have asked about how to set up dethermalizers for these airplanes uh, and and for free flight aircraft in general that use radio dethermalizers. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is one of the BMK timers that we have been able to import um, from from England uh, so we, we keep a little bit of a stock of these and they have various uh, dethermalizer units that some that do and some that don't use the dethermalizer um, and so there's lo lots of options uh, from BMK but the the bottom line is after your airplanes in a thermal you want to be able to get it back down so with a radio dethermalizer, you can determine when that point is. It's an irreversible um, function on the airplane uh, in, in that it can't be reversed in flight. So you have to reset it once the airplane lands. But the bottom line is once the airplane has achieved the desired flight time, is over an area where you want to bring it down, whatever. Uh, something's going awry, you want to interrupt, uh, abort the flight, uh, whatever. You press this button and that happens. So, let's talk about how we make that work. The way this works, and I'm not going to pull everything out because of the fact that uh, some of it is uh, glued or taped in uh, fairly strongly. But now I've got my battery jammed in here, so I'm going to have a hard... There we go. Alright, so I have a 1S uh, 150 milliamp battery right here. And it is hooked up to this dethermalizer receiver unit. Now this can be set up with a timer because there's a little push button uh, under here that you you really aren't going to be able to see that that push button because uh, I've got the unit taped down here into the slot uh, but this is the antenna uh, 433 megahertz 434 megahertz something like that um, that this works on. Now I have soldered a connector on here uh, which th these units come with a, with a set of solder pads so you can hook up a servo or they have a breakout board that you can run uh, a, um, a, what's it called, a, a band burner, which is a little coil that uh, runs electric current. Or you can also set it up uh, to run a, um, a single cell, or sorry, a brushless, there we go, a brushless 1S um, powered motor. Um, there, there are several different options there. But I have it soldered to wires to come up here to a 1.9 gram servo, which I have up here in the nose to actuate the dethermalizer. And the way it works is because I have, um, especially on an airplane like this, I want to have a lot of tension on the dethermalizer to make absolutely certain it works, especially after I had this go wrong out there in Colorado. Uh, but the bottom line is that I run this up to a little mouse trap lock. So I've got the little arm right here, and it's limited by that servo. So if I press this button right here, and see, boom, and then it resets. Fairly easy. Um, these will run pretty much all day on this little on this little battery. But the bottom line is, I'm going to stick the battery back inside, stuff the connectors down so they're, you know, just so they're out of the way. But the bottom line is this tends to drop back into place. And so you can then, I'm using a spring on here, and then pull it over that latch like that. And I would like to thank Don Deloach for showing me uh, this particular setup for one of these, because this is a much more secure setup. I was using a rubber band on mine out in Colorado that ran from about here, because I had a little uh, loop of, uh, of spider wire running up here, but then I had a rubber band running back. And the issue is the rubber band in certain scenarios can get caught on, on things back here, and then it gets caught. And so then you end up with your dethermalization, if it got caught about like that, doing about that, which is what happened. And uh, it wasn't enough to, it, it didn't increase the sink rate enough to bring the airplane down. Uh, which was very disappointing. It was the best glider I'd ever built. Uh, this one is running close second, although that first launch you saw was kind of cruddy. So, um, now, one other thing I'll show you, set the airplane down, is uh, Dimitro Sillin out of Canada um, designed this little 3D printed case. And so this is a um, battery strap. 
So I can stick this on my arm, and because I'm a scrawny little guy, I don't need a big strap. But the bottom line is now I have that on my arm, so when I need to dethermalize, do that. Um, why that's important? The reason why that's important is if you're flying these competitively, in particular these, there are other classes where it's an issue, but especially in hand launch, you are on a dirt bike chasing that airplane. And you don't want to be holding on to uh, a transmitter. You want to, oh yeah, I'm up to about two minutes. You know, look, stopwatch, uh, glance at it. When it gets to two minutes, you stop the bike and press that button. Or if you're better than me, you can press it on the move. Uh, but the bottom line is, uh, that's very important. And I've, I've run into some scenarios where it was very important to be able to have all of that going on. And since I have had the experience now of trying to dethermal, trying to carry that transmitter in my hand while I'm riding a bike, um, not cool, not cool, uh, not over rough terrain. So anyway, uh, just some thoughts there uh, that are that are worth considering. Uh, so anyway, I'll show a couple more videos of this thing doing its thing. I mean, y'all seen it, but y'all seem to like to. Y'all seem to enjoy seeing all this crazy stuff because y'all are addicts too. That's more what I was hoping to show y'all. Right there. I'm center up in it. There we go. Now it's mostly centered. And going up. Right, let's go catch up with the airplane here. This is where we're going to have to do a tactical dethermalization so that we can get the airplane away from obstacles. Oh, it's running now. Is it going to circle back around? Nope. So, boink. And coming down. Coming down, down. All right, so um, got it dug out of there. Some of you are going to ask about the flight trim on that flight because y'all are distracted from the fact that, hey, we've got radio dethermalizer because, hey, Josh's model started stalling off in a straight line. Um, I know this sounds weird, but this airplane's trimmed that way. Um, and I'm still zeroing in on the trim. I think it needed a little bit of left rudder. Yesterday I took some off because it was flying better that way. Uh, not left rudder, right rudder. Uh, I think it needs a little back because it's being a little too obnoxious. Uh, but the bottom line is this airplane is not trimmed to fly a circle like you would typically trim a glider. Um, and since that won me a contest, nearly won me a second one before I lost the airplane, um, I'm going to stick with it, but the, the bottom line is it makes the airplane basically hunt thermals, so it self-centers into, into lift and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, like I said, it's a little off, um, not enough rudder for the amount of wingtip weight that I have on here. So someday we'll try to do a video on that. I can't make any promises. Uh, I want to get it enough. I'm still defining what the exact technique is, and then I'll be able to write a paper on it, so... All that jazz. Anyway, um, we'll see y'all later.
Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.